everyone. Just yesterday, we announced and revealed the Mayan Pantheon, the latest uh, edition coming to Hand of the Gods. Uh, and today, I'm joined by lead designer Scott Guiney to kind of give you an overarching idea of what went into the design of this Pantheon. Uh, so first question is, why the Mayan Pantheon? Obviously, there's a lot of other Pantheons yep. inside Smite that we haven't explored just yet. Well, the first thing is we were looking at is what would be the most unique Pantheon that we could possibly do next? And then the second part of that is to make sure that we had enough gods inside of one of the existing Smite Pantheons to make sure that the new Pantheon felt really full of life. And Mayan made the most sense because there is just so much mythology yes. rich inside of there that everyone knows with human sacrifices and just death and rituals. And as soon as we kind of did a little bit of research on it, I was just like, we're 100% doing Mayan next. What kind of feel did you want the Mayan Pantheon to have inside Hand of the Gods specifically? They have this ritual where they basically just kill a person and then they wear their skin inside out and they perform like a very shamanistic ritual in front of the entire tribe. And I said, oh, dude, this is like a necromancery cool. spell, dark death kind of Pantheon. So. And we've never done anything with it with death inside of Hand of the Gods. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, if we take the worst part of our game, which is when people have their units be yep. killed and make it a benefit, then it would reward everyone. So uh, that was really a no brainer for us from a design side. So obviously the leader is uh, Puash. Uh, there was a number of gods inside that pantheon. Why did you decide to go with him specifically? Well, since we went for a more necromancery yep. and death feel, it made sense to use the god from the ninth layer of hell. He is the god of decay. So obviously we uh, revealed the leader ability where it's uh, Apwash is going to be deploying mm -hmm. zombies wherever he wants on the battlefield. What was kind of the design you wanted to go into these zombies? Because they are unique uh, where they only have one movement, for example. When we were in development on Smite with Apwash, we tried to do something with zombies, but we were not able to do so. Which is why, you know, he only has the one ability where the zombie actually runs out and hits someone and then it goes to two. So for our game, we were like, okay, we gotta capture the spirit of zombies. So, Scott, we have three new legendaries coming in with the Mayan Pantheon. Each kind of have their own unique play style that players can build their decks around. Let's go over the first one, Blight, a six mana spell. You deal three damage to all enemy units and those that are killed are turned into zombies. The original design that we had for the Mayan Pantheon had corpses instead of zombies. And after a little bit of playtesting, we knew that we weren't gonna do anything with corpses because they were a little bit of annoyances. So we turned them all into zombies. Once that change happened, we realized that we really wanted a card that turned enemy units into zombies so you could benefit from them. And a full board wipe is something that the Mayan Pantheon would love to have. So it was an easy one one. So that covers Blight. Up next, we have Kukulkan, the second legendary in the Mayan Pantheon. This is a five mana two six. And when enemy, or excuse me, when friendly units die, you actually deal two damage to all opposing units and displace them into a random tile on the battlefield. Yeah, Kakulkin is the epitome of the Mayan Pantheon. This was the original design intent for the entire Pantheon. It is strength through death. And Kakulkin, the best part I love about him is that he's a big body. He has a 2-6 for 5 mana who's also ranged, but as soon as he hits the board, you have to respect him. And then the final legendary we have for this Pantheon is Kamazots, a seven mana 5-5 five five with charge and also a war cry. When he's deployed to the battlefield, he's gonna consume every friendly zombie you have, getting plus one, plus one for each. Kamazots, we had a couple of different ideas for, but we were all kind of like, you know, he really, he, he's a bat. What would a bat do? And I was like, well, he should probably fly around. And then everyone's like, well, what if he just, oh, I, I forget actually who said it, but someone was just like, what, it, was it you? Was it? <laughs> Well, then I guess Adonis was the one who was just like, what if he came out and ate all the zombies yep. and he just gained plus plus for it? And I was like, oh, that's so good. You know what? Uh, I agree. I, I agree. That's a really good idea. <laughs> Each of them have their own identity. And the thing I like about that is no other Pantheon so far has that dynamic. And I think that makes mine really unique. Awesome, Scott. Uh, great interview. I'd like to <laughs> think so. Uh, do you have any parting words before we let you go? Yep. So with the Mayan Pantheon, you guys are probably all asking yourself, what's the next Pantheon? Well, we will be starting on the Hindu Pantheon, and we are aiming to release it in the fall, early uh, winter. Well, I actually didn't know you were about <laughs> to spoil that, but there you go. A uh, little bit of insight from the lead designer himself. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us, and we'll see you on the next Dev Update.